Hey there. I recently did a video on how to identify a fake Mont Blanc fountain pen. And in there, I touched upon the topic of Iridium Point Germany, IPG. That is a stamp that you find on a lot of nibs. And someone in the comments said, well, maybe that warrants a video of its own. And I agree. Now, um, there is an excellent article written by uh, Brian Gray of the Edison Pen Company, um, who wrote an article called, let me see, I'm just pulling it up here, IPG Nibs, what does Iridium Point Germany really mean? It's on his website, I'll link to that in the uh, in the description, edisonpen.com, uh, and what he, I, I will use his article uh, to as a basis of a lot of the information I give you here, but I'll add a lot of stuff from my personal experiences. Um, so, here's the deal. A lot of manufacturers put Iridium Point Germany on their uh, nibs, and I think first we have to understand what Iridium actually is. Why would you want to put that on a nib? Well, there's only one person who can explain that extremely well, and that is, of course, no one else than Professor Dr. Tarquin Danglebury, um, Chair of Penology at Cambridge University. I've invited him over, and I think he is best suited to give you this explanation. So, here we go. Take it away, Professor Danglebury. Ah, oh, there you are. Uh, Professor Dr. Dark Windagg. And here, Lord Windermere. Well, yes, and Lord Windermere. Chair of Penology at Cambridge University. That is, I am the chair of Penology at Cambridge University. Lord Windermere is not. He is merely my pet lobster. Now, we need to talk a little bit about Iridium. Iridium. People come to me and say, Professor Dr. Dark Windagg, what is Iridium? What is Iridium? Iridium? What is what? So, here's what it is. Iridium is basically a very hard metal. Very hard metal. It's brittle. But it's very hard. Chemical element 77 IR, and it is used, it has been used for a very, very long time in making fountain pens. And why do people use it? Well, here's the deal. Back in the day, when the first fountain pens were developed, you see, the nibs were made of gold. Why were they made of gold, you ask? Well, they were made of gold because stainless steel had not yet been developed. And of course, the fountain pen deals with liquids by nature, that is, ink and ink would corrode a nib. So you need a material that will not corrode very easily. You see? And steel, the type of steel they had back in the day, was not really stainless. So, unfortunately, that would have rusted, you know, corroded. So, um, the thing is, they had to use another material, and what came to mind was gold. Why not use gold? Yes, AU, use gold. Ha, 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 ha. Because gold, you see, pretty much doesn't corrode. It's very corrosion resistant, but of course it's also very expensive. That is the reason why they didn't use pure gold, pure gold being 24 karat. It's way too expensive, but way more importantly, it's way too soft. So typically they would use 18 karat gold, which is 75% actual gold, and the rest is just some other types of metals they put in the alloy, or 14 karat gold, which is roughly 58.5% gold, and the rest is other materials. Now, Here's the little, little viper lurking around. You see, gold, albeit corrosion resistant, is very, very soft. And the problem is, were you to write with it, it would continuously scrape across the paper, and as a result of that, it would wear down very, very quickly. Another uh, sort of nasty aspect of gold is that it's very soft. So were you to use pure gold and squeeze hard, the nib tines would open up, but they wouldn't spring back. You see? So they would be sprung, as we call that. And that is one point. But as I said, the biggest problem is the softness. It would dent if you use pure gold. But even if you use just 14k gold, so that is less than 60% gold content, even then you have this problem of the nib just wearing down by scratching it across the paper. So a solution had to be found. And pen makers came up with the following. What if we would take a very, very, very hard material, we turn it into two very, very, very small little balls, very, very small balls, and we weld them on the end of the nib. That's quite brilliant. You see, it's sheer brilliance because the nib can be gold, it won't corrode, and the actual bit of the nib that touches the paper is so hard that it won't wear down very quickly. And iridium is so hard that you can use it for years. I mean, think about it. People use vintage fountain pens from the 1900s, and they still write. 
It's really, it's so hard. They can still write, which is very, very nice. This also explains to you probably why it is absolute poppycock that people say that gold nibs are always better than steel. Yes, they're gold, but the part that touches the paper is the same material as a steel nib. It's the same material. So why would gold be better? Oh, but gold nibs are smoother. Poppycock! That's absolute, absolute poppycock, you see. It doesn't matter at all. Now, here's the thing. Iridium has become used less and less recently. In recent years, they don't really use iridium to tip fountain pen nibs anymore. You see, they, they, didn't use, they use other materials. They can use other types of, uh, I think, osmeroid stuff, and, and they use some tungsten even sometimes, which is also very, very hard, and it's a bit cheaper, it's a bit, you know, easier to, to, to obtain and stuff. So, these days, you don't really see iridium so much anymore. And even so, pretty much all fountain pen users still say, oh yes, iridium, 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 iridium. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about because iridium isn't used anymore. It hasn't been used for years. More poppycock. I hate poppycock. Anyway, so just be careful and I'll tell you the truth. It's all right. If you say, oh, this is iridium, it's fine because all fountain pen users know exactly what you're talking about. It's a very, very hard metal. You know, that's all. That's all. So don't worry about it too much. Here's a story. That is what iridium was used for. That's how it came to be. That's why you still see it claimed on fountain pen nibs sometimes. This was Professor Dr. Darkwin Dangleberry and, and Lord Windermere. Yes, and Lord Windermere, Chair of Penology at Cambridge University. That is me, not him. He's just a pet. And he annoys me sometimes. Anyway, um, I think we should go back to S.B. Ray Brown, who will now explain you more about the IPG stamp. I hope this was useful, as I say, and blah blah, ta ta. Did he just... Well, anyway. Um, okay, so now we know what iridium is. Now I think the next question is, why, why should we want to uh, have a nib from Germany? Why is that so important? Well, that is because a lot of people uh, will appreciate the fact that a nib on any fountain pen is likely to come from Germany and that is merely because Jovo J O W O and Bock B O C K are two huge nib manufacturers they churn out a lot of nibs for fountain pens have been doing so for years uh, and many large manufacturers buy their nibs from them so if you have a pen there's a good probability that either Bock or Jovo actually made your nib. I believe, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe Visconti nibs are actually Bock nibs, which are made according to Visconti specifications by Bock. So Visconti buys them there, I thought. Maybe they've changed, that is what I understood at some point. Um, some manufacturers, like Nakaya uh, and Montblanc, they make their nibs in-house. So they actually... Um, make them themselves and I believe I believe Pelican so Pelican also gets them from either Yovo or Bok Bo, I think Bok because I think it's Heidelberg in any case what I'm saying is a lot of nibs come from Germany so German nibs have become kind of synonymous with quality a lot of people think oh you know they're probably high quality nibs um, so that's one part of the story. That's why many manufacturers like to put Germany on that nib somewhere. Because then you would think, oh, it's probably a Bock, or it's probably a Jovo nib, so it's probably a good nib. Now the thing is, this is a point that, that um, Brian makes in his article. He says that the thing is, what happens is that a lot of manufacturers of cheaper nibs buy their tipping material, call it iridium, as the professor has explained, it's probably not iridium, but for the sake of simplicity I will refer to it as iridium. They buy their iridium, for example from Germany, and then they can stamp their nib with iridium point Germany. While the nib is made in India or China or Taiwan or wherever you like to have it made, where it's probably very cheap to have it made. Um, so you suggest to your buyer that it is a German-made nib, while in fact it is Chinese, Indian, whatever, but the iridium that is, or the, the tipping material that is welded to the nib was bought in Germany. So, 
if you understand that, then now we know what iridium is, and we know why it would be attractive to suggest that the nib was made in Germany. Um, now we have to talk a bit about a odd, I suppose, preconception that has come to be, which suggests that all IPG nibs are terrible quality. Uh, if you check out many forums online, including some really big forums, there are a lot of people who are fulminating and, and are uh, um, uh, claiming that all IPG nibs are terrible quality. Well, I, I have reviewed a large number of fountain pens, and I have been in the position, a very fortunate position, where I have been allowed to try a lot of fountain pens. Some literally cost three dollars, and some were over a thousand dollars. So I can say that I have used my share of pens. And my experience, my personal experience, is as follows. As with anything, there are good nibs and bad nibs. And as with anything, no matter what's stamped on it, if it's a bad nib, it's a bad nib. I will give you a few examples of Iridium Point Germany nibs that I have used. All right. Um, I will start with this one. To be honest, I forgot the name of this pen. I know I bought it at mapamundo.co.uk, I believe. Um, here we got a nib. Let me switch on my light there. See if I can show you. I hope it's not too reflective. Iridium point. Look at that. I turned that into an italic myself because it was delivered with one time um, pointing straight at the ceiling. I'm sure Mapamundo would have replaced it if I would have asked for it, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to turn it into an italic. Um, I can't really say anything about the smoothness of the nib, because clearly if the times arrive in your house in this uh, angle, then clearly you can't really try it out without bending it. So I bend it back into shape, I turn it into an italic. But, Iridium Point Germany, just to show you the types of pens you can expect this on, because this looks like a pretty high-end pen. Okay, I got a... Um, Rosetta Napoleon pen, small pen, and this one has, you're screwing the cap in place, as you can see, an Iridium Point Germany nib. Well, this is a type of nib that was very interesting, but when I got this, it was super dry. Not so much scratchy, just super dry. Then I'll show you this one on a Monteverde Jewelry Mini. Again, Iridium Point Germany. This nib too was so dry that it hardly wrote. I had to adjust it. And again, not particularly scratchy, just very, very dry. Okay, Italics Teacher. That's a double ended pen, has a nib on each side. I got this from, whoops, from. MrPen.co.uk. <clears throat> the only reason I mention it is that that's the only site that sells this brand of pen. If you want to check it out, um, these nibs are medium and Iridium Point Germany, and they are fairly scratchy. I had <clears throat> I smoothed them out a little bit. Now here's the deal. Italics Parsons Essential from the same website, same brand, but this one, as you can see has been cut into a broad italic by Mr. Ford, the owner of the website. It has just been, the nib has been cut, as you can see, has been smoothed out. This is a great nib, and yes, the actual tipping was cut off and then smoothed out into, uh, polished into a, a broad italic, but it works just fine. And all of these nibs all perform very differently, None of them were very scratchy, apart from these ones that I smoothed a bit. All of them worked fine. So yes, I have also used a few, I think I've used a few Rinning Point Germany nibs on, that, are, that were on Indian pens, and they were very scratchy. So bad that I've thrown them out at some point, I just couldn't take them anymore, so I just turned the nib into something else. Um, so, those nibs, 
were definitely not German made. I'm not saying that that would be an automatic guarantee of quality. They were made in India. I'm not saying that that is not that like that. I'm not saying that's a sign of low quality. What I am saying is they were not made in Germany, and they were stamped IPG, and they were just not great. So, whatever people put on a nib doesn't mean it's good quality or bad quality. What matters is good tuning, and Brian in his article shows you all kinds of things in very nice uh, um, high magnification pictures, things that could be wrong with nibs. That is the issue, okay? So if your IPG nib doesn't write well, the tines could be misaligned. If there is low quality control, that is likely to happen. It is more likely that there is lower quality control in plants in, say, China or India than in high-end factories in Germany like Bock or Jovo. Um, I don't mean that in any bad way, I'm not trying to be offensive, but this is something that we encounter as fountain pen users. If you've ever used a lot of Indian pens or a lot of Chinese pens, you probably know what I'm talking about. Some of them write really, really well, but some of them hardly write at all. So that quality control is a known issue. Um, the nib tines could be misaligned. Uh, they, the nib slit could be too tight. That is what was the case on these two pens. Uh, in principle, the tipping was fine, the alignment was fine, but instead of having a slit like this, slightly exaggerated, it was like this, completely tied together, and that hampers inflow. So that is something you can check out. That has nothing to do with the fact that it's stamped IPG. That has everything to do with the fact of how it was tuned. So, let's conclude this. What to do about this? Well, there really is only one thing you can do. Check it. Get the pen, use it, check it. If you can't buy it, go to a store, try it out. If it's a pen brand that is not sold in stores, you either take the risk and you order it all the same, knowing that you may have to tune it, or you don't take the risk and you may miss out on a nice pen. One thing you can do that Brian suggests in his article is ask the supplier where the nibs are made. Officially, they have to state where they were made. So if they were um, not made in Germany, but made in China, India, Taiwan, whatever, uh, they have to say so. Whether they really will, of course, is a whole different matter. So again, this is an empirical matter you're going to find some excellent Iridium Point Germany nibs. For example, the nibs uh, that Brian uses uh, on his Edison pens, I think, are actually Iridium Point Germany stamped. But those are excellent nibs, and Brian tunes them before they leave his warehouse. So, clearly, as I said, it's all in how they're tuned. So the one take-home message I would like you to, t to get from this is no matter what is stamped on a nib, it doesn't really influence the quality. Um, and it definitely doesn't tell you that the nib you buy is actually made in Germany. And again, I have also used excellent IPG nibs from India. I have used excellent IPG nibs from China. So you just can't really say a lot about it. It's really an empirical question that you can only answer by trying out nibs, seeing what you like. So, this was me rambling a lot about IPG nibs. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope you may have gotten one or two things from it. Uh, big thanks to Brian for putting together an excellent article. Again, read it and check out his pictures of what could be wrong with your nib. I thought it was very, very informative. So, check out the link to his website below. Menu, articles, uh, etc. Um, that's all. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.